how to highlight certain data points on a line chart. For example, the maximum or the minimum or all of the points that are above the average. That's what we're going to explore in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn everything about Power BI, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. Now let's have a look at our example of today. So we want to build a line chart, but only highlight the maximum. So that's that data point here and the minimum, that point over there. That's gonna be our first example. In the second example, we are going to highlight all of the data points above the average line. As is often the case in Power BI, to achieve this, we need to write a DAX measure. All right, now the tricky part here is to have a calculation that returns the overall maximum. So that's gonna be our starting point. So I'm gonna call this measure here overall max. And you might think, oh, that's relatively easy. We can just use a calculate function and then look for the maximum of our, let's say, sales amount. And then we remove the filter on date. Okay, so you can use all or all selected. Let's go for all. And I'm just gonna remove it from the date table. Now to test your measures, I always recommend create a table and see what it returns. So here I have a table with the year, quarter, total sales. I'm gonna add that measure that I just created. And it returns 235,467 which might not be the result that you were expecting because if we look in the total sales column, there's no number 235,467. Now, why is this? Let's have a look at the underlying table. And if we sort the sales table in descending order on the sales amount, then you can see that the highest sales amount that we have is that 235,467. However, we do not have just one sales transaction per quarter. Otherwise, this would have worked. However, we have many sales transactions per quarter, okay? That means we first need to aggregate it, so sum it up to the quarter level, and then of those values, we need to look for the maximum. So let's go back to our measure and give it another shot. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this calculate function. Instead of that, I'm gonna write it a little bit differently. So I'm gonna use a max x, which is an iterative function, which it goes row by row over a table. Now this table is gonna be a table that has all of the combinations of the year and the quarter. Now, how can we create this uh, intermediate table? Well, we could use, again, the all function or all selected if you wanna keep uh, filters coming from slices, etc. And here we want to have a table that contains all of the years. Okay, so then the year column I'm gonna put in and all of the quarters. Now, if you have a sort by column, for example, here for the quarter, we have quarter number, which I use as the sort by column for quarter. Also put that one in, otherwise it's not gonna work, okay? Then we want to have as an expression the sales amount. Right? I have already a measure for that, total sales. Close your brackets. Okay, so let's see if this works. Now we have 76,119,934, which is indeed the highest value of the total sales that we can see in this visual. Now, just to make sure that you understand the formula, you can also copy just this first part, right, what returns the table, and then go to modeling, new table, paste it in there. If we then go to the data view, you can see we have all of the unique combinations in there. And that is the table that we are iterating. All right, so that was actually the difficult part. Okay, so let's now go to the fun part. So we need to make another adjustment to the measure and we have to check if each sales amount equals that maximum. Okay, so let's use variables, makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna say var. First of all, we have the normal sales amount. So I can refer to the sales amount measure total sales. Then we have a second variable with the max overall sales. Okay, now that part we just did. And then we're going to have the return part. Okay, so the result, here for the result we need to check if the sales 
is equal to the max overall sales. Now, if it is, then we want to return, let's say, a one. Otherwise, we want to return a zero. Okay. And if you use variables, then we need a return statement for the result. If we want to do the same for the minimum, then we can go back to a measure and then just replicate this part here, just copy paste. And then we're gonna turn max into min and max x return into min x, okay? All right. Now for the result, we need to check if the sales equals the overall sales or, now for this you can use the or function or you can use two pipe symbols, which is the same thing or sales equals the min overall sales. And that's it. Now press enter again. Let's see if this works. And now we have another one, but now for the lowest value. Okay. So now that we have tested our measures, we can go back to a line chart and go to formatting. And then over here, we want to have a different color for the shapes. And you might think, okay, I go here to shapes. And then we have the markers but there's no conditional formatting. You can right click on it, nothing. There's no conditional formatting icon. Now here, there's a little trick. What you can do is first turn it into a column chart. Okay, so over here, column chart. And then you go to data colors. Here we do have formatting, conditional formatting icon. Then we can choose the field value. Now here we can go to format by. We want to have a rule where we can say, okay, based on the field, well, that's gonna be our measure. So overall max, should we name it to max min, all right? And then over here, if this one equals one, then we want to have, let's say orange. You see, the maximum is orange and the minimum is an orange. All right, and now that we have these colors applied, we can turn it back into a line chart. Ta -da! That's it. Okay, so this is a little trick how to apply conditional formatting to the dots, the data points on a line chart. Yes, I also think it probably makes sense to have a conditional formatting button under formatting for the uh, markers in the line chart options themselves. But until that time, this is the workaround. Now, if you want to have different colors for the highest point and lowest point, then we just need to adjust the measure a little bit and the conditional formatting. So let's do that. So I'm gonna remove the conditional formatting first. And let's rename the measure as well, so to max min, so that's clear. And then we can go over here to the result statement. I'm gonna turn this into a switch. And then the first argument is gonna be true. And then we have the first check, sales equals max overall sales. Well, if that is true, then we want to return green. And then we have the second check, sales equals min overall sales. Then we want to have red. And if neither of them holds, well, then we want to have blue. Then select your chart again, then turn it into a column chart. Then we can go to data colors, apply conditional formatting. And here we would like to have now a field value. Okay, so a bit different from before. And we're gonna take our measure, max min. Click okay. And now we have for the lowest value red, for the highest value green. Then I'm gonna change it into a line chart and you see that formatting stays. All right, now maybe I could have chosen a prettier color for the green, the blue and the red. So if you want, you can also work with hex codes. So hex codes look like this, for example, okay? And that would make the whole thing just a little bit prettier. Okay, so let's now do another example so that this concept becomes really clear. The next one, we're going to highlight everything that's above the average line, okay? So let's first put an average line in. I'm gonna go here to my line chart, analytics, and then here we have the average line, just add it. Then I'm gonna go back to formatting and I'm gonna delete the conditional formatting that we have. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. We refer to default and the conditional formatting is gone. All right. Now, if we wanna compare all our sales values to the average, it's kind of a similar logic as what we had before. So I'm gonna copy over 
that formula that we just wrote to save a little bit of time. And I'm gonna put that in a new measure. Now let's first rename it to above average. And then here we still want to have the sales in a variable. Okay, so that's not gonna change. And we can get rid of one variable, okay? Because we are going to be only interested in the average of uh, the overall sales that we are showing in our visualization. Now here we do not want to look for the max, but we want to look for the average. Okay, so this is gonna be an average X. And then here for the result, we need to tweak it a bit as well. So you can use again the same log logic. Yeah? So switch true and then sales equals the average overall sales. And then here for the lower parts, well, the second line there I don't need. Okay. And I need a comma there. And that is the hex code for blue. And I return the result. Now let's apply it again to our line charts. So again, same logic, we can create a cluster column chart. Formatting, data colors, conditional formatting, format by, field value. And over here, we're gonna choose a measure above average. Click okay. Oh, it didn't work. I have light blue everywhere. Let's see where the mistake is. I'm gonna go back and you see in the result statement, I say it's equal to, which is of course wrong, should be above or equal to. All right, you see, everybody makes mistakes. Now let's see if that fixed it. And yes, it did. So now we have a green value for all of the val sales values that are above the average line. Can turn this back into a line chart. And there you go. So you see that it's kind of the same logic as the first example. And like this, I could give you hundreds of other examples. For example, the first dot and the last dot. Or maybe you want to have everything below the average line. Or maybe you want to highlight data points that are above a certain threshold. And maybe the threshold needs to be determined by a what-if parameter. Well, that would be cool. Now, okay, I'm rumbling. Now, basically, that's it, what I wanted to show you. Now, if you still have any questions, then post them in the comment section below. Now, if you have not subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope to see you in the next video.